I'm going to have a quick look at Zoom text. And I've just downloaded it half an hour ago, so we'll have a look and see what you can do and what it's capable of. There are various programs out there for people with visual impairment or partial sight, or anyone that has trouble reading text on screen. They've got great options, for example, the magnifier is good. Also, you've got color enhancements for overlay colors and a good text to speech option as well. So, let's open up Zoom text. And it tells you straight away when you open it up, a little icon at the top that we can access by doing a right click on as well. So if I was to select preferences, it will bring this window up you see here. Again, it's only a demo version because I only just downloaded that not long ago. So let's have a look at magnification first. Now I do recommend when you're using this option to go up to the icon at the top because if you click on it and go to magnification you can access it there as well but definitely worth learning the shortcut keys. So what shortcut key have I got disabled zoom text so I've got command option delete to turn zoom text off and on. Really handy option. And enable enhancements again options command and I've got the backward slash option. So there's a few I need to remember. First thing is full screen. Currently it's on none so if I hold the left button and drag it up to say 1.2 it goes up to 1.2 now remember I can turn the magnification off by selecting options command button and selecting delete select delete turns it back on turns it back off I use that option to turn it on shortcut again say I want to zoom in I want to use the same shortcut options command but this time up and down arrows so as I go up you can see it expanding there 1.7x and if I go down it will then decrease. 1.1x and at the bottom here you've got an option here called enabled gesture zooming so it's telling me as I'm zooming what I'm doing now if you've got partial sight or visual impairment that can really be helpful so you know which direction you're going up or down now the reason it did it was because I held the shortcut key option but command as well because I press command it will then speak back to me what I'm doing so you can change that for example you might decide actually I want to use shift to read back. So now let's try that again. Command option and up arrow. Gesture zooming. 1x. But actually I'm going to leave command. Also we've got an option here called lens. I'm going to select lens. Now if you haven't got zoom text enabled so I'll turn it off with option command and delete. You won't get the option to adjust the lens either. But let's turn it back on. With shortcut here again and to zoom in up cursor. So, this little lens that I can zoom in where I want. So for example I go top right hand corner I might decide I want to zoom a little bit more. Again option command and Notific up cursor. Notification now I'm going to come back down using the same shortcuts but using the down cursor. I'm going to come down to the option here. This says actual lens size. Let's go right down to Let's turn magnification off completely, but not turn off zoom text, because if you turn off zoom text, then you don't get the adjust lens size. Tap lens size, and there's my lens size. Now you can't go in the corners and make them bigger by dragging them. What you've got to do is put the cursor in the middle, hold the left button, and then you can expand it that way. And I think it keeps the ratio as well. There you go. And then you can't click on the resize. Look, just click the Enter key, and it sets the resize. Now let's check. So options command and up cursor 1.1x and then you can see the size of the lens now there really good option let's turn that off so there's magnification level let's go to enhancements so color scheme here I'm currently on normal so let's put that on reverse video as so because I'm on lens mode then you only do it in your actual lens which is really handy but if you want the whole screen to do that then option command and delete to turn it off go to magnification we need to change it to full screen so then we can have that tint in the whole screen go back to enhancements option command and delete key we'll turn it back on and there we go and then you can choose which options that you find much easier to work with white on black maybe or even yellow on blue which stands out quite well you can apply the temperature effect as so and you can see how it sharpens it up as well there and even add the warmth if you want there. So let's pull that to the left. So you can play with the colours there as well. So I'm going to put that back to normal as it originally was and tap on normal. Just a quick tip if you go to system preferences in the bottom of your dock 
or top left hand corner. You also get your options here if you do not have Zoom text, which is your accessibility option. And again, if you come down here, you've got your Zoom option here, and you can toggle in and out with that if need be. And you can play with your display here, again, with invert colours if you need to as well. Just to let you know that exists. Also, if you scroll down, you've even got your dictation where you can do speech to text as well, and also read back for you as well if you need to. But let's go back to where we were. So again, we're looking at Zoom text. Another option, I'm just going to untick that option there. Another option we've got here is color. So pointer enhancements. You see my pointer's red, so I could put that to normal if need be. Or you can change your colors, varying on what you need there again, to your own preference. Because sometimes you suffer from visual impairment or partial sight. It's easy to lose that cursor when you're trying to do something. If you don't know where the cursor is, it's a nightmare to do anything on a desktop. So make sure you select that. Also the size, extra large, is pretty decent. I'd like it to go a bit larger than that though, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to normal. Locator type, so if I do a crosshair, you'll get the crosshair effect there. Or circle, you prefer the circle effect there to move around with. But I do prefer to turn that off and just leave as the cursor effect. But I'll go back to size and just make that large. Cursor scheme, look to the right, we've got that red rectangle, haven't we? So let's go to focus first. I'm going to change that to thick green, and you can see how it's changed to thick green. Or if you prefer to highlight stuff with it so you know where you are. So if I move down with the cursor, you can see it highlights as I go down and goes up. So you can see exactly where you are. Or use the tab key in certain applications as well to move around with. Speech. Now, so they've got a beta option here, and I looked at the bottom there, it says about the focus echo feature is currently still in development. What this will do, echo back depending on where you are and what you're hovering over. Again, this can really be a useful option if you're not quite sure where you are in an application or what you're actually hovering over or going to press. So at the moment it's turned off, so I'm going to tick it to turn it on. And we've got two options there, labels only, so it's like a fibrosity. Labels only, only read back the main option that you're hovering over, but you can also get the labels and context to get more information on what you're hovering over. So I'm just going to put it on labels and turn focus on. Speech. And you can see, so I click on something, it's then giving me more information. Speech. So if I go to the top, Reader. Read from clipboard. now you see I'm hovering over there with the cursor, I've not pressed it anything, and if I go down with the cursor, so that way I'll read back the option for you and highlight in the colour we chose earlier enhancements. So you can see exactly where you are and what you're doing. And if you want more information, depending on where you are, you could always select the label and context option. And again, try that out. And there you go, it's giving me more feedback than just what the actual label was. But I'm going to turn that off for now. It's a really handy option if you have trouble finding where you're going and navigating on the screen. Just one little option I'm not too happy with the focus echo is they could do with a level where you can turn it down. They've got two levels, labels only or labels and context. It's nice to have like a minimum and maximum of how much feedback you get so you can play with it exactly how you want. Because you might only want a little bit of feedback. They've just given you two options. Main basic feedback or a lot more feedback. So that could be something they can play around with. But I like that anyway, they put that in with a beta effect. Now mouse echo. This will echo back what you hover over or press a button. Let me show you. At the moment, I'm hovering over, it's not reading back text, is it? Let's open up uh, Safari. And let's go anywhere. Let's go Wiki. And let's maximise that window. Let's find something to have a look at. Uh, where should we go? Any subject would do. Let's use this. Come up to here. I need to go to my preferences again to preset this up. And again, I've got a shortcut key. Options, Command and Enter. So a lot of the shortcut keys use the main Options, Command. You just have to learn the other additional keys. So it's not too bad to pick up and learn. So I'm opening up Preferences. Now what I want to do here is, let's go back to Speech. It's not reading back anything Mouse Echo, so I'm going to select Always On. And now if I hover over something, it should read back. There you go, let's open up Safari. So if I hover over any text from the beginning, it should read back. This article is about the type of website. 
and it reads back all of your highlight. Click control to stop. So that will read back anywhere I hover over now. So let's go back to our preferences again. Now you can change that so it only actually reads back when you press the shift button or command button which is one of your shortcut keys or while pressing option. So I'm going to select command option and hover over. Nothing's happening because I have to press the command option for that to do that. Let me open up Safari. Hover over. Nothing happening. This time I'm going to hold the command key down on the keyboard and hover over. This article is about the type of website. And there you go. Click control will stop it. So you can see what a great option that is as well and you can choose exactly how you want that to read back for you. So there's the three main features on there's other tracking options and there's also mouse options as well if you require them. But what I want to do is close that window. I want to go back up to the icon at the top and tap it. Now we've got the magnification options there where we can increase and decrease magnification. Again disable zoom text I've shown you that which is option command and the delete key. Again you can enable enhancements which is quite handy in real time. Again option command this time we've got backward slash and it turns it off and on quickly for you. Disable speech if you just want to turn off the speech again shortcut keys there. Now we've got a redo option here so I've got read from browser read from clipboard, read from file, read from camera, open reader. Let me go to open reader first. Welcome to Zoom text reader. A and I'm going to click pops. What this enables you to do, there's a new add-on I believe has come with it. I've downloaded it with the demo as well. And it enables you to convert PDF. It's got built-in OCR, optical character recognition. So if you've got a PDF file you've downloaded, then you can convert that into a Word format have it read back, really powerful and even use the save option to save it as a word document or rich text format. Also it uses a camera option here. Now I currently haven't got a camera. I could use the built-in camera if I go to settings and camera here but I feel using a built-in one won't work very well especially for taking snapshots of text. You need a good camera I feel for doing that. And once you take a snapshot of it it will then convert that into a Word document for using OCR. Just if you have got a camera to use, plug it in, come to your options here and select it in the drop down list there. Choose your live camera resolution, obviously the better the resolution, the better quality you're going to get. OCR you can leave that resolution as standard if you want or turn that up. Again start camera app wherever you used it last and also you've got show crop frame here, that will put a frame around the camera to show where to crop it from. You can leave that off or on and then choose how thickness you want that line rounded. But you'll see that when you put the camera in. Then if you go to OCR, you can choose when it actually auto reads when confidence is greater than. So what it does is it will flash the camera and take a snapshot depending on how good the quality is. So if you've got a quality camera, you could say, right, I want the quality better than 65% before it actually press the snapshot button here to take a photo. That way the conversion will be really good to read back. But that depends on your camera, so have a little play with that anyway. While we're in here, we've got your text option for this window, so you can maybe decide bigger text, you can see it expanding in the background, and even choose your colours. So you might want a sentence and word apply scheme, just to a word as it highlights, or the whole sentence as so. So you can choose your settings for that, or you might prefer none. Colour scheme, you might want more simple, or you might want vivid or even peaceful. Again, choice is yours. So make sure you set that up as well. The speech within this window as well, also you can choose your voice here and again the speed and volume. And just click speak sample just to check it. So I believe that's an add-on, download that separate, the main Zoom text program to try it out for 30 days. So I'll have to get myself a camera and try that out at a later date. So in this window, click play and it reads back for me and you can jump you forward or jump back right and click on. pause. Also you can share your text here and save it to a rich text format if you desire. There's your camera option which you need to select, convert, so try that with a camera 
and give me some feedback and let me know on how that works. Now you can read from clipboard. Let me show you. So let's go back to Safari and I'm going to highlight this text and I'm going to select Command C to copy it to clipboard. It's now in clipboard. Now if I go back to Zoom text, it's now in clipboard. So if I click that button, this article is about the type of website for other users. See and click pause. It will automatically start reading back for me because it was in clipboard. So that's a great option to do as well. Also got a read from file option here. And because it's obviously a 30 day trial, I can then continue in trial mode. So I'm going to press trial mode. And then I want you to find a document for it to convert. So let me see what I've got in my documents, if I've got anything there. There you go, I've got a PDF there. I'm going to open that up. Now it's now using OCI on it. I'm hoping you'll convert that PDF, put more doc format, into a standard text format for me. Which then enables me to read that back, especially if you're using a lot of articles. Done. Pretty simple. So it uses that OCR option for your camera here. Once you set it up, you take a snapshot. And it also does it for PDFs when you use that option here from the file. So now I've converted the PDF using OCI into a Word document. I can click share and then I could save that if I want as a rich text format, standard fonts. It's a pretty good add-on, so definitely worth a look at. Also, I've got your settings option at the end there, which I showed you earlier. And choose a little option in the right-hand corner. We'll shrink it and expand it for you as well. So I'm going to close that option there and go back up to my Zoom text icon. So that's in Reader. You might select read straight from camera when you can press that button, takes you straight there. You can select straight from read from file. So you can jump to where you actually want to read from. So there's a quick look at Zoom text and there's a lot more options to it. Definitely worth learning the shortcut keys. But on a quick look, initial look, it looks pretty good and pretty easy to pick up and that's the main thing. So if you're struggling for example with job access with speech or maybe supernova, you can always give this a go as well. Thanks for watching.